years. Hello everybody and welcome to Greg's Vintage Workshop, where I'm working to restore history one piece at a time. Tonight we're starting a new project. For those of you who watch Doug over at Moslack, uh, you've watched him complete recently his MFP, multifunction panel. And I was so impressed with it that I had decided when he started it that I was going to be copying him and emulating, uh, only making it my own. And I told him that. You know, they say that imitation is the best form of flattery. Some people might say, oh, you can't think for yourself, you're copying it. I can think for myself, but I also know something good when I see it. Uh, you, some of you may remember that the um, Variac that Ron C. put together, I actually had that same particular uh, device and, and I copied him on that. And uh, I'm very happy with it. And I use it every time I work on a radio now. It's one of my favorite tools. So I'm hoping that my MFP will become one of my favorite tools. So tonight we're going to get started. Uh, we're going to start out with uh, showing you the pieces that I've gotten together. I don't have everything yet, uh, so it's going to be a work in progress once I get all the parts. Right now I don't have all the parts, but let's get to, to the bench and I'll show you what I do have. Okay, so right now, as you can see here, here is my super heavy duty, super capacity, Whirlpool washing machine electronic panel. Uh, last year in late summer my daughter told me that the washing machine that uh, was down in North Carolina was shot and they were going to have to get a different one. And I said, well, what are you going to do with the old one? She goes, we're just going to probably junk it. And I was like, okay, well if you're going to junk it, save me the top panel. Because I said, uh, a friend of mine is making a tool using his and I might just decide to do the same thing. So she did. And uh, so when I went down there in December, I brought it back, and uh, this is going to be the basis of my multifunction tool. Now, unlike Doug, who cut his down some, I'm probably going to use the full length of it, just so I have a lot of room in there. And uh, so we'll take a quick look. All of the electronics are still on it, or in it. I haven't uh, taken it apart yet, but uh, we will. And I actually plan on using a lot of this wiring. Um, in my MFP. So that's that. And I'll show you the parts that I've gotten thus far put together for this. And I haven't decided everything I'm putting in it yet, but uh, we'll get a good start on it. So let me get this off the bench and we'll open up my parts and I'll show you what we got. Okay. So one of the first things that I've got on screen right now that I'm going to show you, and hopefully this is an okay angle, I'm trying to make it so you can see, but not see me, but you can see what we're looking at. So the first thing that I'm planning on uh, doing with my panel is creating an, uh, an electronic circuit breaker. It's the, basically called the glass slinger uh, circuit breaker, electronic circuit breaker. Uh, glass slinger, I believe his name's Ron. I think it's Ron, created it, and um, one of my viewers asked me if I would be interested in recreating it using a board that he had designed based on that circuit. I told him, sure, I would be interested in doing that. So he, uh, out of the kindness of his heart, uh, Telefunkian is who I'm talking about, Telefunkian, sent me this box with not only the board but the majority of the parts that is going to be required to create this electronic circuit breaker. So anyway, this is the box and that's a letter he sent to me. This is the actual circuit. And I'll show this in more detail as we uh, get involved with it. But this is, as you can see here, Glass Slinger Electronic Circuit Breaker. 
and so I've got the schematic to go by. Now, the way this electronic circuit breaker works is if it sees a shorted condition or a certain, you know, a high, high enough amount of um, amp draw, which you would see in a shorted condition, it trips and kills the power uh, to, the, to the circuit. And I'll discuss that a little bit further, but you guys can go to Telefunken's um, site. You can also go to the Glass Slinger site. Uh, and watch the videos and uh, I can tell you right now those guys are much smarter than I am They can probably explain the circuit better than I can But anyway, I wanted to show you what he sent. So everything that's in this box is what he sent to me uh, As well as a letter basically explaining it and Telling me that you know, he supplied a lot of this stuff here So we have the circuit board itself in here. Actually he sent me two boards. All labeled. Very nice created boards. So I've got those. Set those to the side. I've got some capacitors, electrolytic capacitors, as well as some smaller capacitors. In this bag I've got terminal blocks, terminals, wiring. I haven't opened it all up here yet. Screw terminals. Let's see if we can open this up. I'll pull some of this stuff out. I've got a harness. Electrical terminals. There's a, a push button, momentary push button. More electrical terminal socket. And then a bunch of different screw terminal for the assembly. Some LEDs, which I didn't realize he'd sent me LEDs. I actually bought me some LEDs. Okay, we have here 100K potentiometer. These are all brand new parts, by the way. Got some 10K resistors. We've got here a 12 volt. Single pull double throw 20 amp non latching relay. We have here a through hole current uh, transformer ROHS. Goes on the board. And we got here some additional electronic components in here. A few different things in here. See a MOSFET in there. See some diodes in there. I don't want to dump everything out, but yeah, there's a lot of different things in here. There's an IC. Good stuff. Have another potentiometer here. Actually, this is a uh, not a potentiometer. This is actually a switch, multi-position switch. You see all the terminals on there. Hopefully, I'm holding this stuff where you guys can see it. A great big old switch here. Two of those. He gave me a uh, part list and highlighted what he had provided and highlighted the things that I needed to pick up. And I very was very, very, very impressed that Telefunkian was willing to send me all this on his own accord. Um, 
didn't charge me a penny for any of it and only asked that I would build it. And obviously, yes, I'm building it. And I'm going to build it into my MFP. So that's probably going to be the first step of the MFP is to get this built. So that's that. So now let's see what else I've got for the MFP. The parts have come in. So that's that. As I showed you earlier, so I bought my own set of uh, 110 volt. These are 110 volt. This is going to show the, the indicator when it's on um, and also when the circuit breaker throws uh, or trips. And these are all various colors here. I've got blue, yellow, red, green, uh, and white, I believe, in there. So that's those. I got a 0 to 1000 DC voltmeter. This is very similar to the one that Doug has. And as a matter of fact, he's the one, Bob and he are the one that uh, basically gave me the part number so I'd know what to order. So we got that. Trying to keep it big enough so you guys can actually see. One thing I am going to be putting in, in there as well is my uh, Weston output uh, voltmeter. And then I'll be using this when I am um, adjusting my frequencies and seeing what's going on coming out of the speaker. So this will be my output. And I am going to build a load that I can plug into and that will probably be part of my MFP as well. This is a Weston. I, I picked this up on eBay about a year and a half ago. I took it apart. I put a new capacitor and it uses a 0.1 microfarad capacitor in there uh, for when you need to filter out DC voltage. But it actually worked quite well. It's got uh, a 2, a 10, and a 50 volt range on it. Yeah, I'm planning on using that in there. That's going to have its own spot in the MFP. So we've got that. This is my AC Variac that I picked up off of eBay last year at some point. And I'm going to put that in there. It was actually part of this panel. I removed it from the panel. So that's going to be there. The transformer, I don't have uh, a transformer for it yet to get the high, uh, high voltage DC. I, what I'm planning on using, I believe, is the transformer out of my... I have a 47-1230 that I restored the, the, the record player section, but the, uh, the radio section is a complete cobbled up mess because it was the very first project I ever started on, and I went in over my head. And it's one that I think that the only way I'm ever going to get it done is to actually get another 47 1230. I've already uh, stolen some stuff out of it. That leaves us with a pile here. That we're going to open because I haven't opened these yet. So <clears throat> here's some. I did open this one because I got this in the mail the other day. This is some 330K. 2 watt resistors will be part of the DC power supply. This I got today. I haven't opened this yet, so I don't remember what this is, but we're going to open it up together. This is, I think, my AC volt amp meter. I believe. Yeah, exactly what it is. That's that. You guys can see that. Yeah, so it's a pretty good size. that. Another 
packager. Open this one up. Yeah, okay, so these are my two 220 uh, microfarad, 450 volt uh, capacitors, electrolytics. That'll be it for the DC power supply. And the last thing I got here is from DigiKey. And if this is what I think it is, it should be a transformer for the electronic circuit breaker that I ordered from DigiKey. If I can get the box open. I think it's just one. Yep, just one. This is a 12 volt, 250 milliamp transformer that will be used on the board of the electronic circuit breaker. So, that was a big piece I was waiting for so that I can start the assembly of that board because that's going to be my first step. Well the first step is going to be to tear the stuff out of the out of the uh, MFP. One of the things that uh, I will have in here that is exactly the same as Doug's is his DMM. I like the DMM. I like that display on that DMM as well as the fact that it fits size wise top to bottom uh, in that housing uh, so I'm going to emulate that piece because I like it it fits good the other thing I bought was a component tester you guys remember I, I don't know I don't think I I don't think I did a, a video on this but basically before I had my printer I had one of these and I had made a case out of wood and the bottom comes off, you can see the feet that I have on here the bottom comes off so you can get to the battery and such and service it and this, is how, this has actually worked quite well for me you know having this and as you can see I, you've probably seen me use it uh, in some of my videos and this works well but because I didn't have the printer at the time I had to make it out of wood so I am I ordered a new one. I actually ordered one that's a little bit nicer. It actually comes in its own housing um, and it's got a color screen. And so I'm going to mount that on the MFP and uh, we'll have that on there. I also have my signal tracer that I'm going to incorporate in there. I don't know. I'm not sure what else I'm going to put in there. I've got a long enough space here. I want to make sure it's functional for what I do um, pretty much on a project basis here so that I'm not just putting some stuff in there to have some stuff in there. I want to make sure that I can use the stuff um, that I put in there. So gathering it all together and we will start getting it together. That's probably all I'm going to show on this particular video. I just wanted to give you guys a little teaser of what's going to be coming up. I've already got um, a ton of like banana jacks and, and all that sort of crap. Um, I probably will put a frequency counter in it because I have the one frequency 
counter this one that I, I built last year. Actually two years ago I think I built this and it works quite well. Um, but I, when I bought that frequency counter, there were two in the bag, so I, I have this one. So since I have this one, I'll probably go ahead and uh, install that. I also have some other little meters here. This is a uh, 0 to 100, 100 volt. I don't know that I'll need it. Uh, it does volts and amps both. But I've got, I got some various things. I think i got the buck converter and the boost converter. I got. I think this is a boost converter here. I don't know that I'll need it. Um, I've got some various types of jacks. i got a bunch of little switches. I don't know what I'm going to need. I don't know what I'm going to use. I'm still figuring it out kind of as I go here, kind of like Doug did on his. But I, I think it's going to be functional. I think it's going to be good. Pretty excited about it. What I like about it is if you guys have seen any of my other videos, you know that I actually have multi benches in my shop. I have my, my shop spans a bunch of my basement. And so I've got basically three work areas. And right now, um, when I'm going to work on one bench versus another, I have to haul some of my stuff over there because I don't have uh, multiples of everything. So the plan is, I believe, I'm going to keep the multifunction panel on this bench, which is the bench that... Let me show you the bench. So this is the bench. And I think that uh, I'm going to have the multifunction panel on this bench. And then, because I do, I do have the scope here as well, and I obviously do have that variac there, which if I have the multifunction panel on this bench, I probably will move that over to another one of my benches, as well as some of the other components I've got in here already. But to me, that's the ultimate so that I don't have to continue to move things from, from room to room. But that's the plan, and that's where we're at, and that's what we're getting ready to get started on. So I just wanted to throw this quick video together and put it out there. So from Greg at Greg's Vintage Workshop, and obviously from Moose or Dodger. That's Dodger. So from Greg at Greg's Vintage Workshop and Dodger from Greg's Vintage Workshop, thanks for watching.